Welcome to another episode of Lisa's Kitchen. Tonight we're going to be looking at knife sharpening. So I've got a couple of little problems with these particular knives. Um, I also want to sharpen some of my other knives. So I'm going to be sharpening these. I'm going to show you in a moment how, how we're actually going to do it. I'll explain the mechanics of how knives are actually sharpened. Okay, so let's have a look at a cross section of a knife. Should look something along the lines like that, and it will, which you then have the main part of the knife here. So my my knives are having some problems. I've got some chipping right on the on the very tip, and I've also probably got the wrong shape here. Over time, is it swells. Okay, so let's have a look at the knife. So what we're going to do is, with a whetstone, is actually start pushing this material and it off the end of the knife, which curls over ever so slightly. And this is called a burr. So you do one side, and then you start doing the other side, and it pushes this burr over the other side, and eventually it wears off, leaving you with a nice sharp point. So what I have here for equipment that we're going to be doing um, this sharpening with, I've got two different whetstones. So I've got a 400 and a 1000 in one stone, and I've got a 1000 and a 4000 grit in another stone. So these stones um, are soaking stones. So what you need to do is we need to put these into water and let them soak until they stop producing bubbles coming out of them. So all I'm doing to do is fill it up with cold water and let them soak. And as you'll see there's lots of bubbles coming out of these stones. So you can't use these until they've stopped producing bubbles and they're fully soaked. So what I have here is I've got a big chopping board here just to to work on with some anti-slip underneath it. I also have here a bamboo whetstone holder which again with some anti-slip on under it. And also these stones came with some rubber grips as well. It just stops them sliding in these this bamboo holder. I've also got what you'll see here I'm going to put it close to my face, all there. Let it focus now. So what I've got here is a knife guide, which, is, as you can see, has got a couple of little ceramic um, rounds on it. And this is meant to clip onto the back of a knife to give you a set angle to work on. This is only any good if it stays put, because you can see it moves quite a dramatic amount and to keep it a set angle. The only problem with that is each size of knife is different. And like in this one, it covers, almost covers the blade. So I won't actually be using this. So and what, what we do is we're going to be grinding, doing the main grind on a backstroke. And you, up and down. So we'll start that once these bubbles have stopped forming on these wet stones. Okay, so the stones now are just about soaked. Um, they've stopped producing bubbles. Well, I'm going to show you the state of this knife here. So at the moment, it's quite, you can see it's jagging on this sheet of paper. It's just standard. So, so it's tearing the sheet of paper rather than cutting it. So what I'm going to do is, because this is, these knives are so bad, I'm going to start with the 400 grit side. And you can actually feel the difference, but I do know that the orange one on this one is 400 grit. If I can get it in the rubber, there we go. 
And what you do tend to need to do is dribble water on it every now and then to make sure it stays wet. So here we go. So you need to hold an angle somewhere around between 12 and 17 degrees. And it's just nice even strokes. And work your way along the blade. You see it's stone starting to dry out a little bit, so put a bit more water on it. Work all the way along the length of the blade. Try using the whole of the stone. And you can see here, this grey stuff is actually the bits of metal coming off the knife. So what I'm doing now is I'm just feeling along the side that I haven't sharpened for the burr. And there is a burr most of the way along. There's not much of a burr along here. There's nothing there at all at the tip at the moment. So the tip needs a bit more work. Right, so light, even pressure. And try and keep the angle consistent on the blade. So I've been working on this edge now for a couple of minutes. See there's a, I can feel a burr most of the way along, but I can still see there's a few little chinks in this blade along here, but around where my finger is. There's another one just there. There's another quite bad one just there and there. However, I've done one side, which is this side. I need to take some of this side off as well. So you can either flip hands or change the blade over, the side blade over. I'm actually reasonably okay doing left handed. So I'm going to turn it over. So now I've been doing the other side, I can feel a burr on this side now, near enough all the way along, there's a little, I haven't got one there, I need to do a bit more work on the tip, and still feel it on the underside. So a little touch more water on there. So this knife is looking a lot better now than it was. Still got a few chinks in it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to a couple of last swipes on both sides for the foot on the 400 grit 
and then we'll go over to the thousand grit side. Oh, slipping a bit. We go to the thousand grit side. Change over to the thousand grit side now. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've done a 400 grit. Oh, I'll put a bit closer to my face. 400 grit on both sides. I'll show you on here. So this is now the thousand grit side. And we do the same again. So you see the slurry forming here on the stone, it's quite thick. And this is actually what the, the stone is meant to do, is on these type, particular types of stone, is they are meant to wear and become this slurry. I mean, that's what's actually sharpening the stone, uh, sharpening the knife is the, the interaction of, between the stone and the slurry. But you still need a little bit of water in there to lubricate everything. So there is a little burr on there. Obviously being a thousand grit stone, that burr is a lot smaller and a lot finer than it was with the 400 grit stone. Now we're going to push the other, do the other side. So a bit of a burn now this side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to swap over stones. Let me just give this one a quick rinse and I want to show you something. So out of these two stones I bought this orange and white one about two or three years ago and I bought this blue and white one just this week. And if I put them together you can see just about that on the white side there's a very small gap between the orange and white and the white uh, blue and white stone. So if I now put the orange side on there's a quite a big gap showing. And this is because these so these stones are quite soft and are designed to wear. However, use wearing stones um, does actually make your knife change shape a little bit. So what I'm going to do with this stone here, so it's a thousand on the blue side and six thousand on the white side, is I'm going to give this knife that I've just been working on another go on the thousand grit side, even though we've just done a thousand grit on the other stone. And this is just to try and straighten the edges up on the knife, make sure everything is fine as that other stone is wearing net these days. I might need to replace that coarser stone. Come on, if I can get some of the, the rubber. So Again, try and maintain the same angle, and it's a push-pull. I'm going to be a little bit slower on this one, because I don't want to... Wipe that cloth on the cloth.
So just having a look at the edge here now, just about got rid of all those nicks along the tip here. And we are a little bit of a burr there, a bit of a burr there. Okay, so now we've got a reason. Now we have a reasonable edge on this knife. We've gone using a thousand grit stone on both sides, and it's pretty sharp as it is. What I'm going to do now is on the six thousand grit side is what's called a polish, and this involves just going down the edge a few times to polish the edge up so now we've gone down both sides and what we do what we can also do on this stone is what's called a strop and all you do, all we're doing with the strop is clean the edge up even finer and what we do is we're going to go 10 times up and down the knife one side 10 times the other side and then five times five times three times three times twice once so here we go So now, just once up and down, and what we're going to do is once up and down part of the blade, we're going to do that twice on each side. So there we go, that's this knife sharpened and polished and even stropped. You can also, oh you can't see on here, you can also strop using leather. Um, this is just an old leather belt and what you do is you pull it across the back of the knife. All that does is just finish the the job of stropping off. So let's give this knife a quick wash. So giving this knife a quick wash, I'm just looking along the edge. There's still a little tiny chink just here, and there's a little tiny bit here. So I'm going to need to work on this knife a bit more. But let's see how sharp this actually is right now. Again, so all I have here is just a sheet of paper. And you can see that's so much better than it was before and you can do really fine cuts with this knife now you can see just there is a bit of still a bit of work needs doing on the blade just there but that's fairly impressive now so what are 
What I also will do is I'm going to do a slicing of a tomato. So tomatoes are probably one of the worst things to cut with a blunt knife through the skin. But what we'll do is we'll do a quick test in a second with a tomato. All I'm going to do is slice this in half and see how easy that was. So now I'm going to see whether I can just take thin slices off this tomato. Hold this tomato. If you ever try and slice a tomato through the skin and you get to that bit it just wants to fold over. So how fine can I go? Ooh. I'm holding the tomato. Fairly fine. Let's try another pass. So I think I've done pretty well there. It's about a millimetre thick, if that. Worst bit is trying to hold the tomato still. Okay, so fine now. Oh, right, there we go, just felt folded over there. But that, you can see, is extremely f fine cut. So there we go. So there we go, an extremely thinly sliced tomato stuck on the end of my knife in one piece. So I'll do another one. See, I've got to the stem there. So there we go. An extremely thinly sliced tomato. So I will show you some close up pictures of this nicely sharpened knife in a moment. If you like what I've done please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe so I'm going to be doing some more um, kitchen tips and tricks but also more recipes.